Greetings, everyone. Information gap activities uh, like this one are extremely popular with ESL teachers and students. But teachers who see them merely as a way to get students to talk and look active are missing out on the full potential these have to help students develop speaking and listening skills, and even to reinforce vocabulary. In this video, I'll point out some common mistakes teachers make with these and how they can be adjusted to make them more interactive for students. And I'll show you how you can easily customize these in order to focus on the specific types of vocabulary words that you'd like your students to work on. Let's start by looking at some common mistakes in the charts that teachers use. So students are put in pairs, and one of them, student A and the other, is student B. They cannot see each other's paper. Now, my colleague will help me demonstrate a weak point about these charts. This is how many students do this activity. We'll call it the easy way. You'll be student A and I'll be B. Okay. You want to fill in the blanks in your chart by asking me questions. All right. First, what is Ken's relation to me? Well, my, my grandfather. Next, uh, when was Ken born? 1953. Now, as you can imagine, I don't have to actually listen to student A because I can see the pattern that he is following and I know the next answer that I give is friendly. So here is my first recommendation for improving this activity. You can see that I've put numbers in each blank box randomly to indicate which one to ask first, second, etc. Now, I, student B, have to really listen because I don't know what the next question will be, like this. What is Mimi's personality? Mm, uh, serious. When was Ken born? Um, let's see, 1953. Here is my second recommendation. As you may have noticed, I, student A, got little speaking practice. I just read the word from the chart. And so we can call this minimal practice. To get maximum practice, we can tell students to answer with complete sentences. For example, What is Mimi's personality? Uh, she is serious. When was Ken born? Um, let's see, he, he was born in 1953. So along with encouraging students to use complete sentences, I recommend that you demonstrate how they should use conversational expressions when doing these. Th these are expressions like, you know, of understanding expressions. I see, or I got it, or okay. And then if uh, you don't understand or you're not quite clear, um, you could ask for repeat expressions like, could you repeat that? Or, I'm sorry, what did you say? Or, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Or, did you say? And, you know, to tell you the truth, the most important benefit from benefits from doing these activities comes from students practicing these expressions. They're going to be able to use these every day outside of our classrooms. Here is an example of using them during the activity. Uh, what is Mimi's personality? Uh, let's see. Sh um, she is serious. I see. When was Ken born? He was born in 1953. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said he was born in 1953. 
Okay, I got it. My fourth recommendation is kind of connected to this. You know, it's very helpful to show students the type of questions that they can ask when doing uh, this activity. So, for example, um, here are some possible questions that they can use to start uh, uh, when they're doing this. So, for example, what is Ken's relationship to you? Or what is Ken's personality like? Or what year was Ken born? I should mention here that you can find a link to this complete handout in the notes below. Now, here is my fifth recommendation. So if you have had students doing pair activities, I'm sure you've noticed that sometimes some pairs of students will complete the activity at different times. Thus, you want something that will keep them productively occupied while waiting for the other pairs to finish. So a good way to do this is to include an exercise on their paper below, their, uh, on the paper below their schedules, or written on the board. And it can look something like this. So the exercise says, while you are waiting for your classmates to finish, you can, you have a couple options here, talk to your partner in English about any topic that you want, or ask your partner these questions and have a conversation with them. And then the, uh, the questions can be, you know, kind of connected to the chart that they just finished. So this is what uh, student A's paper will look like, the complete uh, handout for the student. And you'll notice at the top are the directions. So the step one directions, you know, do not look at your partner's paper. And, and it says start with number one in your chart and ask your partner a question to fill in the answer. Then ask a question about number two, etc. Also answer your partner's questions about his or her chart. Then we also include the expressions that we'd like them to be using when they uh, do the activity. So, you know, I see, I got it, okay, could you repeat that? Those kinds of expressions that I had uh, mentioned before. Then we also want to include those uh, possible question starts that we uh, want students to use when they're doing this. And this will be very helpful for them. And then you can see the chart that they will be working with. And uh, that includes the little numbers that I had mentioned showing which one uh, they should do first, second, third, etc. And then finally, you can see uh, step two directions, which I talked about what they can do um, if they finish before the other pairs of students. So, like I said, if you'd like to see the complete student A and student B handouts for this activity, including these complete directions, um, I, I put a link below. And you can also download and use the handouts with your students for free. Now, here is my sixth recommendation. I uh, once attended a session at a conference for ESL teachers where the presenter was demonstrating how to use information gap activities. To have the audience members experience these, he had us match up with a partner and he had us sit back to back while doing the activities. So I imagine that he was worried that we would cheat if we were looking at each other's paper. Uh, so from this, I was able to experience firsthand how hard it was to understand each other and how much was lost by not being able to have eye contact while we were sitting back to back. You know, it just seemed so unnatural and even physically uncomfortable. And on top of that, it was totally unnecessary. So my recommendation is to not have your students sit back to back when they're doing information gap activities. I have found that if students understand 
that the purpose of these activities is to help them develop their language skills and not play some kind of a game, they see the absurdity of cheating. In other words, they don't try to look at their partner's paper. And when they finish filling in the blanks, I usually see big smiles on their faces as they compare their charts and find out how well they were understood. So, I do not do these back to back and I've never had any problem with students cheating. Now, I'd like to talk about how you can easily customize these information gap charts to have students reinforce vocabulary that you've been working on and to continue to practice conversation strategies. In the example that I showed you at the beginning of this video, the categories were relationship, personality, and birth year. I had made that one because I wanted to review vocabulary for relationships like cousin, nephew, niece, and aunt. And for personalities, we were working with uh, uh, vocabulary like serious, cool, funny. Later in the course, after students had developed more vocabulary, I revised the chart so that they uh, could review things like this. So there were some less familiar relationships like stepmother or stepsister, father-in-law, brother-in-law, or there are kind of personalities that were a little bit less familiar to them that were new, emotional, brave, artistic, foolish. So I've also made charts that included many different kinds of categories. And here's uh, some examples of the kind of categories that I've used when I'm making these charts. And here are a couple of examples. In this exercise, I wanted students to work with countries, weather, transportation, and buildings. And here are the directions and a shortened version of the chart. So some uh, possible question starts, like, uh, what is the weather like in the Philippines? Or what building can I see in Canada? Or how do some people travel in South Korea? And this is how students would carry out this activity. Uh, student A starts. How do some people travel in South Korea? Um, they travel by subway. I see. What building can I see in the Philippines? You can see a uh, theater. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. I said that you can see a theater. Okay, I got it. And as I mentioned before, this chart is a shorter version of the one that I used with my students. So in case you'd like to use the longer version with your students, I'll include it in a link below. And you'll notice that I put it on a Word document so that you can more easily use it as a template and customize and perhaps expand it for the types of vocabulary that you'd like your students to work with. So here's another example. I used the same template from the previous activity. In this exercise, I wanted students to work with animals and emotions and money. Here is what the charts look like. My students seem to especially enjoy the challenge of telling the money, like $248.73 and $2,739. You know, it was, it was fun for them to see what their partners had written down, and they felt a special reward if both of them got it right. So these are my recommendations for how to make this information gap activity more effective for language skill building. So again, first, put numbers in the blanks on the charts. And then second, encourage students to use complete sentences. Number three, encourage students to use understanding expressions and asking for repeat expressions. Uh, recommendation four, show them possible questions that they can use. 
Number five, include conversation questions that they can talk about if they finish before their classmates. And then finally, number six, have students sit face to face, not back to back. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.